Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. A um, couple weeks ago, I went to a national ASA event, a London, Kentucky event, and finished third with a V3X, my hunting bow, one of my older hunting bows. Um, shot unbelievable with it, and honestly, it shot good enough to win. So, I came home, ordered another phase four. Uh, I didn't want to break my, uh, my hunting bow, my phase four down, because it was the only one I had to go to London. So, I ordered another phase four. It's what's in this box, and I have another national event, the second leg of the Triple Crown, coming up this weekend. So I'm gonna build this bow um, and show you guys exactly how I build my hunting rig out to go compete in a national tournament against the best in the world. All right, so we got a phase four in ambush green, um, bare bow, ready to set up. So the first thing I'm gonna do, first thing I do every time when I get these bows, I take this grip off. I've always, shot um, straight off the riser pretty much on every bow I've ever had. I think that started when I was a little kid. I always had a longer draw length and as I grew, I was trying to get as much out of the bow as I could. So I would take the grips off and shoot off the riser. Um, and so now it's just hard for me to get comfortable with anything else. So when you get your phase four and probably any bow going forward for Matthew, this little sucker right here is very important. Uh, it says bridge lock on it, but that has your set screw bridge lock technology from Matthew. So we're going to throw that right there. First thing I do, uh, put it in the press, find center. I'm going to get my knocking loop and my knock in tied in where I, where I want it. Um, and then I will put my rest on next. But first, just going in the last chance press. There we go. All right, we're in the press now. All right, guys, so this, since this is getting set up for a tournament bow, all these Matthews bows come with these monkey tails on the string that you can see right here. Um, and for hunting, they serve an incredible purpose. They quieten the strings down, they quieten the bow down tremendously. They don't affect accuracy at all as long as they're both on. However, if one of them comes off and the other one stays on, it can definitely change the impact and even the tune of the bow. So for this tournament scenario, I'm just taking these monkey tails off. I'm just gonna go ahead and cut them off and just shoot with a regular string because for a tournament, I don't care how loud the bow is. Honestly, it's gonna be quieter than pretty much any other bow in the range anyway. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut those off. All right, now we're gonna get the knock and loop. So I wanna make sure here that I am not compressing these limbs at all. So I'm gonna go out until this is sitting loose so I can wiggle it back and forth both are loose but it won't fall and then i'm gonna measure and honestly i need a sharpie for this so let me grab one so i already know what knock what arrow i want to use on this setup i'm going to use a gold tip triple x and i'm i've been shooting the the hd pin knocks um however i feel like they've been fitting a little bit too tight on these strings and this this gto knock fits perfect so this is the knock i want to use that's very important when you're tying in to know a good, or have a good idea of, of which one you want. So I'm gonna measure from the center of this little Allen head on my axle screw right here. I'm gonna put a corner inside that hole and measure to the knock. And that gives me 16 and 7 16 to the center of my knock right there. And then I'm gonna measure from this one and see what we get. Make sure that that corner is in there so we're at 17 so we have to come down quite a bit now in the past i have shot with my knocks dead center um, recently um, and i do feel like that's overall is probably the most forgiving place as far as just shooting however aiming i feel like they aim better a little above center so i'm going to start about an eighth of an inch above center with this knock so here's what I'm gonna do when I get my knock exactly where I want it. I mark underneath with a black Sharpie because I'm gonna tie an, um, and I'm gonna mark over top. That way, now if I accidentally bump that, it slides, I don't have to remeasure and start all over again. So the first thing I do is take a piece of knock and loop. Um, I like that Spectra uh, from BCY. It's very small um, and, and it's not stiff. I think. A lot of people shoot way too stiff of a knock and loop. Um, and that's a video for another day. But I've seen a lot of people do this wrong where they go on top and 
start on the wrong side of the string. You want to go on the inside on the top and tie in your first knot of, of the loop just like that. Leave a little tag so you can tighten it down and I'll slide it right there where I'm not moving the knot from its spot and I'll snug that down pretty good and make sure that when I slide my knock up against that knot, it's in the exact spot it needs to be. So right there. And then I just take this and kind of do a little half hitch here and just to hold it out of the way. So I'm gonna tie, I always tie an under knot. So it's a knot up under my knock. I don't tie one on both sides. I just do an under knot. That keeps any knock pinch from happening. It keeps pressure up on the knock so it keeps my arrow down on the rest. Um, a lot of times you'll see, or you may have trouble when you're drawing back and that arrow lifts about halfway when that loop con compresses and, and it squeezes your knock. And that's terrible for consistency, terrible for impact. So always tying under knot. I'm using 14 thou halo uh, to do this. So I'm gonna get this tied in. Yeah, it's pretty simple. I just start away from the knock and work my way in just doing overhands. Um, and then I'll come back on top of it. You don't want to squeeze that knot down into the serving, just a snug knot right there. And then you don't want to pinch that knock in either. So once you get, I mean, even remotely touching that knock, that's perfect. It's not squeezing it. You want to start going back the other way. So I'm going to go back and wrap a couple wraps on top of that knot, working my way back down. I'm gonna do one more wrap on top and then finish it off up against the serving here. Right there. So then what I do is I go ahead and make that final double knotted loop right here and just leave it open. Then I'll take a dab of super glue. I'm using tack glue right on that. I'll go ahead and undo my arrow for this so you can see it a little better. And I'm gonna put just a drop on that right there and then I finish my knot into that glue right there. And then I'll pull that last knot tight. Then I'll take and dab that glue over this knot. That way it does not come off. Because if that thing comes unraveled, you're in trouble. Then I cut a tag in and burn those down. And now I will finish tying the bottom side of that loop. Obviously we're going the opposite side we did on top. So a lot of guys, when they get their loop cut the right length, they'll burn it on the string. I never ever do that because when you burn a loop up against itself like that, it weakens that material. So I always untie it, undo the knot, and then flare out this end and burn it separately, um, not up against itself. You have to burn it a couple times. Make sure you have a good solid burn then i'll turn it and burn it the other way make sure there's no fuzz make sure there's no mist sides just like that so you got a good catch on that and it's not gonna it's not gonna pull through So once I get that tied in, I don't over tighten my loop yet. I don't really want to cinch it down until I make sure everything's going to tune right and is in the right place. I don't have any knock pinch, stuff like that. So right now I'm just fine tuning that knock fit right there. That is perfect. So um, I'll do another video on that later, like a proper knock fit. I've done them in the past, but just quickly I, when I plug that in, I want to be able to pull it back a little bit, let it go. Comes right off of there. Um, I don't have any wiggle like this. I can slide it up and down, no problem. That's perfect knock fit. So not gonna have any issues there. Um, next, I'm gonna just eyeball my peep in. I'm just gonna slide this peep in here. This right here, Matthews puts this in between all their strings. All that is, if you shoot a solid color string, you don't have like multicolor strings, this shows you the true center of that string. So I always leave this in all my bows. Um, but this is where the peep is going to go as far as the center of the string. I almost pulled it out right there, but I'm going to leave that in there. And I'm using the Hamsky peep here. I love it. It shades everything well. Um, and I can put in different apertures, whatever I need to do. So now I'm going to press the bow down. Again, make sure everything is lined up. You can really mess up a bow. 
by not paying attention when it's in a press. Now we'll press it just enough to get this peep in there. So I'll grab that serving like that and pull and get my peep through just like that. Then I'll slide this to the top. And now I'm gonna decompress that. Make sure my peep's on that mark. Now I'll decompress the bow and see what we got. Now, once I get that peep in the center, I just slide this up the string almost all the way to the serving. And then I'll burn the end so it doesn't get too flared out on me. So you can see the peep is lined up perfectly almost with my loop right here. But once I put that in, it turned everything left. So later, once I figure out that's exactly where I need my peep, um, and if it is, I'll probably just throw in a peep tuner or something in the string here, make sure it's turning completely right. So now we're gonna take it out of the press, move to the other side of the shop here, literally two feet behind me, um, and make sure we get the rest on right, the arrows are in there right, stabilizers, sights in, then we're gonna shoot it through paper, make sure everything's tuned, check timing, all those things. Um, now we're gonna start moving a little faster. Now, I'm gonna put my rest on. So I'm using the QAD TRI rest. I helped design this rest. In my opinion, it is the best tournament rest in the world. Um, just the most versatile, lets you torque tune, does everything. So I'll turn this so you guys can see. So this first thing you do here is clamp that on. Let me get this Allen wrench out of the way. I might have to loosen that a little more right there. So normally I'd line it up right there, but I know from the last time that I was about right there on my V3X. Now, once that's clamped on, I can still move it with this thing right here, but hopefully we don't have to move it too much. And we'll just snug that down for now. So here's the sight. One cool thing about these, another cool thing, is this bridge lock technology. So that, that Excel Achieve slides right in there. And now we're back to this little sucker. This is gonna go in here. I'm gonna finger tighten that for a little bit. And one cool thing is you can feel these notches. One, two. So I'm gonna start there. Um, and so we're gonna torque tune this sucker. And you use the rest and the sight to do that. So we'll snug that down, not too tight. Now I'm going to put my LP light on just these LP lights are my favorite. Um, used them for years, so we'll snug that down there, and that'll just plug in right there, and we will have light. Yep, that is bright. We can dim her down as much as we want. We can brighten it back up. That's perfect. Next, I am going to go ahead and put all the stabilizer brackets on. Um, first, I'm going to do this V-bar bracket. Um, I'm just doing one on these hunting bows. Um, I've been running dual V bars for the last couple years, really like it, but on this shorter platform, for some reason, I feel like I'm, I shoot a, just a single V bar better. So I'm going to put a single V bar bracket on here. Now the front bracket will go on and I am using a 10 degree down angle front bracket right now. We'll slide that on Good, right there. Now I'm just checking to make sure we don't have anything that's majorly looks off here with this setup. Um, looks if anything a little high, which isn't a bad thing because I have way more movement down on this rest because of this angled um, bar here. All right, so um, what I do for my grip, sometimes I'll use Bomar grip tape. Um, sometimes I will use tread tape instead, just on the back like this, I cut a piece off that fits. Um, or sometimes I even use both. For this scenario, I'm gonna start with just tread tape for draw length issues, make sure um, I'm right where I wanna be. So I just cut a piece off this. You can get this at Lowe's, whatever. It's got an adhesive back. Um, it feels like sandpaper. What it is for rain, um, sun, no matter what, if it gets wet, it's still got the same consistency on your hand because we're not relying on tackiness. It's just the roughed edge that we're relying on for consistency. So I'm going to peel this adhesive off, stick it right on this grip. Now 
all right guys so now i am going to put the bars on um get it balanced the way i want it to or really close anyway um, and then it'll be a matter of checking poundage checking timing shooting it through paper shooting it through the chronograph and ibo that i'm going to this weekend it's the second leg of the triple crown like i said we have a speed limit of 300 feet a second with a three percent leniency so we can pretty much shoot 308 but if we hit 309 we're disqualified. So I want this thing running somewhere between 304, 306 range um, when I leave the house. That way it gives me a couple feet per second leniency if something changes from their chronograph to mine. And then I'll check it again once I get there with theirs, make sure I'm still legal. Uh, but that's where I want this thing at um, if I can get it there. So that's what's next. We're gonna go ahead and put the bars on. shooting a 455 grain triple X and I'd like it to be uh, 300 plus. Three hundred. The poundage is on 67. So I'm thinking maybe uh, we'll check the timing. What I could do is put a couple twists in each cable and get that poundage up a little bit. But honestly, 300 feet a second. It's pretty good. So next I wanna shoot this thing through paper um, because if it's really out of tune, it could affect the speed as well. Um, and then that'll tell me some things, probably timing too, before I put it in the draw board. So I'm gonna get this fixed. I feel like it's gonna be off, but we'll see. See what we got. Well, we knocked something off the wall. So that tear, very close to a bullet hole. I'm talking about extremely close. But I think if anything, it's a little low left. Go down just. a Couple clicks right there. All right, hopefully this is a bullet hole. Yep. All right, that's it. Perfect bullet hole, 300 feet a second. Now I'm gonna put it in the press and make sure timing is perfect. Um, I want my stops hitting. If anything, I'd love them hitting exactly at the same time. Sometimes for aiming, if you're having trouble dipping low, and I'll go see later if that's the case, I'll run my, run my top stop just a touch ahead really helps to keep that pin pushed up in the target. So uh, for now, I'm gonna try my best to get them hitting exactly the same time uh, and check it. Maybe it's perfect, maybe it's not, but we're about to find out. My top just hit and my bottom is like a 64. I'm gonna leave it and I'm gonna go see how it groups. I'm gonna go see how it aims. I'm gonna try to get a sight tape, maybe shoot around with it. But last and final step in here, building this bow, I'm gonna get my peep turning perfect to make sure it's at the right spot. Um, just put a temporary wrap around it until I go outside, get my sight tape and get it fine tuned. But let's get that peep turning real quick. So it needs to go here. All right, so I gotta get this peep turning right. And this, this string, since it's brand new and cables and everything, you're probably gonna take it 100 shots or so to settle in, stop moving all together. So I'm not gonna really tie anything in today. Um, I'm gonna spend the day shooting a bunch of arrows through this thing. But for now, I wanna get this peep turning right. I'm gonna put a peep tuner in it. Um, I'm gonna go above my peep here to get it to turn back. Back to, I'm gonna find this center again with this. About right there, pull it apart, move it back out of the way, and then put this peep tuner in there. Like that, get everything back in the right track. Out. As far as the initial build, that is exactly what my hunting bow built for a national event 
is going to look like outside of some fine tuning on my p pipe that i have to do outside um, i'm going to run a five power lens this weekend with an a clarifier um, now it's just some fine tuning on stabilizers um, and that kind of thing which i need to do on outside and honestly may change from day to day um, as i'm getting used to this thing but that was the bow build uh, for the triple crown event with a phase four hunting bow. The only thing I may add later are side plates, the Matthew side plates, I do like those. Um, but that'll be the only minute changes that could possibly happen to this bow before I take it and shoot in one of the biggest tournaments of the year with it this weekend. So let's go get a sight tape. Wish me luck.